Jason Buttrell, uh, welcome to the program. And so I watched this, and, and I just want to hear from your perspective. I certainly heard you loud and clear on the documentary, but you don't, nobody wants to solve this. This is the border crisis is working for Republicans, Democrats, and the media, and no one's really interested in a solution. Is that your point? Whitlock, I have never been more blackpilled than I was when I did this thing. I tell you what, I I thought that at least Texas politicians would be, you know, serious about fixing the border. I thought the Republicans at one time were serious about it. I kind of lost that a long time ago when nothing would actually happen. I think that it's too politically powerful for them to use the border and to use immigration basically as a tool every election year. We, every every election year, suddenly it becomes like a big deal. I don't think that Donald Trump would have been elected president in 2016 without the border. Now the border is a hundred times worse, and I still think they don't have any intention of fixing the border. Um, we hinted at it right there in that trailer, but um, we actually went down to Eagle Pass. We saw Shelby Park, and it looks impressive. You know, they have, uh, you know, Humvees, you know, armored vehicles. They have uh, soldiers standing there with live ammunition and M16s, um, concertina wire everywhere. And you're like, wow, you know, like finally, you know, Texas is doing something about this. Well, they don't show you about 100 yards away on the other side of the park. They never show that part when all these red state governors go down there and lend their support or when celebrities like Elon Musk go down there and they show their support. Jason, it's it's a photo op and it's disgusting. And I cannot believe that the appearance, at least to me, is that this is just being used to game the system. This is being used to gather support on all sides. And I don't think that that's ever going to change. Wow. I mean, that's a really powerful statement that it's never going to change. And so do the politicians think that this isn't harming America and American citizens? Is all of that rhetoric just for political gain or is the border crisis real? So the border crisis definitely is real. And yeah, I, I don't think the politicians intend to fix it because why would you? Every election year, if you're a conservative politician, you can scream about the other side and how they're not doing anything or how they're letting in all these uh, immigrants and they can make a stand say, and they can make promises. They can say, we will fix this. Look, we are fixing it now. Uh, the left will continue to do what the left does. But what's insane is even the left is trying to play weird games with it. For instance, we spoke to a... Uh, a retired Border Patrol official. Um, the border is his life. He spent his entire career on the border. He moved to uh, to Eagle Pass, and now that's where he lives. And he told us about this secret State Department agreement that Joe Biden made, brokered, basically called the Mexican president. He sent Secretary Blinken down to Mexico City. We still do not know what the full contents of that meeting were. Now, this was probably about two weeks before Governor Abbott seized the border. So around two weeks before, they went down there, they held this meeting. It was about migration. That's all we know. Well, what we do know is that after that meeting happened, 95% of the illegals coming across the border in Shelby Park Eagle Pass area and really all of Texas stopped. 95%. Jason, it took a phone call and some agreement that they hashed out probably over some coffee and donuts or whatever they were having. That's all it took. The rest of the, uh, the immigrant traffic shifted uh, further down the border in places like Arizona and California. But in Texas, it stopped. All the migrants were then bussed back down south through South America. That's all it took. If all it takes is a phone call and they can solve this issue, then there's something completely broken with how both sides are, are using this. And both sides are using this. So you engaged with, interviewed a, a lot of these guys that were part of this truck convoy. Yeah. Do you think they're aware that this is all a gimmick on both sides, or do they believe that the Republicans are actually acting in their best interest, or are they just like you, like, man, we're, we're all just getting played here? Well, so the people in the charter convoy did not see what we saw. I'm, I'm, I know a lot of them have now seen it. I need to talk to them afterwards, but I, I don't think, because I think the majority of Americans actually have faith that conservatives, at least, really have some kind of intent to eventually solve this. 
But I mean, that, I mean, really, the 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 seizure of the border is what kind of prompted this trucker convoy to begin. Um, I don't know if you saw the media when they were like kind of getting this thing together, but they were instantly branded the Army of God. They were uh, branded as you know, Christian nationalists, these dangerous Christians that, you know, in the same vein of January 6th, it was going to get all rowdy and violent. And it was crazy. The people, a lot of people I was talking to, they were like, are you seriously going to, you know, in bed with them? You know, what if it's a giant psyop? And I really couldn't believe what I was hearing because conservatives were scared to even let their voices be heard because they didn't, they were scared of what the government was, was brewing, cooking up. Uh, they were kind of cowed into, you know, okay, fine, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to show up to any protest. You know, screw it. Well, these guys were like, we're going to do this. We're going to make sure that no infiltrators get into our convoy. We're not going to let anything violent happen. But still, the media was calling them Christian nationalists. And what I found was that was just simply not true at all. This sounds so hopeless. What would you, beyond telling people to go watch this, uh, documentary. What advice would you give the American people as it relates to p pushing politicians to authentically try to solve this? That, that, that's a good question. And I think that we do have a blueprint for at least starting um, to fix this mess. And I think Donald Trump did a, a whole lot of good when he was there. I mean, there was one day in February when Joe Biden, he intentionally collapsed the border. It didn't happen to him. The border didn't collapse, you know, under his watch accidentally. Joe Biden did it on purpose. Um, remain in Mexico, got rid of that. Um, catch and release, drastically ramped that up. The parole system that Donald Trump was trying to get rid of and scale back, they scaled it up. That is what collapsed the border. Now, we know that those and, and, and a lot of those are just political uh, decisions that we could make right now. So there's some very real things that we can now point to, especially in, in the next administration. Say, do this, do this, do this. These are the things that we want to see or else we're voting your butts out of there. You know, the next time we're getting in someone that's actually going to make do on all, all these promises. But we know what can fix the border. It's not an enigma. You know, it's not like, well, crap, you know, it's like we don't know what to do. You know, everything's, you know, seasonal and we just don't know how to fix this. No, we know how to fix it. We just have to demand that those specific things uh, are either, you know, enacted into law or just bring them back. The things that Joe Biden took out. So how do people watch this? What do they need to do? Is it just a blaze TV uh, dot com subscription? How can. How do people access your your uh, documentary? So if you're already a subscriber, you can just go um, to Blaze TV and you can find it there and watch it. You can go to blazeoriginals.com. You can find it there. You can also go to another website called uh, therealbordercrisis.com. You, you can head there as well. Um, there's a promo code border. You can get 30 bucks off an annual subscription. Really, really good deal. Um, and it's a it's a don't miss. If you are a fan of like Vice style, you know, like investigative, like that type of journalism, Vice is now out blaze tv is in so you want to go there and check it out it's it's cool